Good morning. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to day three of our symposium where we bring it all together. Before we get underway, two housekeeping items. First, I'd like again to thank IDEMIA for their sponsorship of the reception last night. It was another terrific opportunity for networking and mingling with the sponsors, exhibitors, and generally having a very good time. After two full days of uh, presentations from exhibitors, sponsors, and of course, our panels. Second announcement, I assume that by this time, everyone has had an opportunity to download the TRIP application for the symposium, TRIP 2017. So I have a request, if I may. On the application, there is a questionnaire to help us assess the value of the symposium. We'd very much like for you to fill out the questionnaire, and this will help us to improve next time around. Every symposium, this is the 13th now, we hope that over the years we've been able to improve, adapt, and evolve with the circumstances in aviation technology and so on. So it would be very much appreciated if you could fill out the questionnaire on the app. So thank you. This morning, <coughs> pardon me, this morning we examine the third component of our travel cycle, the arrival stage. Crucial at this point is border inspection and the timely, secure, and reliable links between travel documents, travelers, and security information held in government databases. With our panel this morning, we will offer and examine ways of how best to reach higher levels of security while ensuring the speedy processing of passengers. Leading the panel is Mr. Ross Greenwood. Until 2010, Ross was a senior executive in the Australian Passport Office. He now works as a consultant, undertaking assessments for ICAO and other international organizations. He provides advice to agencies and vendors involved in passport issuance and civil registration, border control, biometrics, and identity management. I'd like to note that Ross was Australia's delegate to the ICAO Machine Readable Travel Document TAG from 2007 to 2010 and the inaugural chairman of ICAO's Public Key Directory Board. So Ross, the floor is yours to you and your panel. Thank you. And welcome. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. So we've reached that uh, critical phase in the travel journey of uh, travellers arriving at our borders and we have some uh, presentations this morning uh, from around the Mediterranean or at least our speakers are coming from around uh, the Mediterranean and my, for myself uh, like the rest of you I've come to learn from the experience um, of others and that's what uh, we will all do uh, this morning with our distinguished uh, speakers. So our first presentation is from the Italian uh, Customs Agency, a joint presentation on border control management. Uh, Giovanni will be speaking first. Giovanni is a senior customs officer within the Central Directorate for Anti-Fraud and Control of the Italian Customs and Monopolies Agency. Um, he has a special interest and responsibility for international passenger uh, controls. He's a representative on a number of uh, EU and international expert um, groups and he's working in integrated border management for improving cooperation between customs and border police. Uh, Giovanni will be followed uh, by Michele who uh, is also from the Italian Customs and Monopolies Agency um, Kaylee's a customs officer involved in research and development projects for customs control and inspection procedures and met methodologies, um, working in national working groups um, with other border authorities. So uh, let me hand over the lectern to our first speakers.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The trip Italian representative for Custom Side. It's an honor and a privilege to be invited for attending this symposium and to have the opportunity to speak here to all of you. For my presentation, I will speak in French. Je voudrais. I would like to give the customs viewpoint in an integrated border management approach, drawing on the experience that we've had in the European Union and in Italy. And we will be talking about the uh, single window approach, drawing on our customs experience when it comes to customs clearance of goods. As you know, all of the statistics forecasts have suggested there's going to be a real increase of uh, passenger flows in the years to come. We estimate that at the EU borders, there will be 302 uh, million individuals in 2025, 302 million border crossings. So how can we ensure that we have uh, targeted border controls? At the moment, we have uh, separate uh, databases that are rather fragmented. For example, we've got the uh, uh, border uh, police and immigration and customs. They've all got their own uh, databases, but they are not interconnected. The twin objectives of security and passenger facilitation and also fighting against uh, illegal uh, uh, trafficking by air transport means that we need to come up with an appropriate immediate uh, solution. The solution really is to have cooperation between customs and border police because border police and in general the immigration authorities and the customs authorities are the ones who are on the front line together. And now on the screen we see a list of the different challenges involved when it comes to fighting against illegal trafficking and the other hand uh, facilitation that we need to offer to air transport passengers. But often we have to update the list of crimes because when we talk about terrorism, we have to talk about the funding of terrorism and also money uh, laundering because people are often carrying uh, cash with them. And there are, are very much connections between all these different types of crime. Sometimes there are customs uh, crimes or crimes with customs interest, uh, uh, such as dual use, WMD smuggling, uh, drug traffic, trafficking, and also money laundering. So we have to try and find a balance between all of this. And we have to have a risk analysis as well as cooperation between the different authorities concerned so that we can expedite the uh, checks and concentrate on the high risk uh, passenger flow. The border is a very complex place. There's many people involved. And on the screen, we can see a model border with all of the different actors involved in the border crossing process in general. So what happens at the airport and in general at the border if there's not cooperation between the different authorities concerned? That would mean that we would have fragmented checks or repeated checks. We would be not efficient, and everyone uh, wastes time i.e. the passengers and the authorities involved. And this also, ha also happened with customs clearance of uh, goods before we had a one-stop uh, shop or a single window. There had to be health checks and we had to wait for the results uh, from other customs authorities. And finally, we could proceed to customs clearance. But with this single window uh, for uh, customs clearance of goods has meant that now we have a solution to resolve this issue of uh, the time that all of this takes. So by using this idea of a single window approach, which of course has to be adapted to uh, air transport and uh, passenger air uh, in the air transport, wouldn't mean that there needs to be interagency cooperation with border control and others. And that would then lead to true uh, facilitation and uh, a true risk analysis so that we could uh, target uh, certain uh, passengers and we could uh, reduce time by sharing the data that are already available. Um, with the 
border control authorities. On the screen now, here is an example of what I've just been uh, talking about, namely the fragmentation of the different uh, checks and the various databases and uh, how the customs data can complement uh, what's happening with the border police or the immigration authorities at the border. And I can also refer to the data dealing with VAT uh, refunds. Uh, where you have the passenger uh, historical records and you've got an e-file for each uh, refund that's been requested. You've got the passport of the passenger, the destination of the flight and the products that have been bought, the uh, value, the method of payment, where uh, the payment has taken place and so on and so forth. In Italy, uh, when it comes to authorizations of VAT, you find it's called online tax uh, refund at uh, exit in order to optimize the situation. Moreover, customs can also perform certain specific uh, checks, uh, such as various uh, uh, searches, uh, which are, are of administrative in nature, and these are powers which the other authorities do not uh, possess. That means that if we want to profile uh, air transport uh, passengers, and if we want to use the API and PNR data, then we need to include the information that comes from the customs controls that deal with the application on the ground of the various types of legislation involved here. When it comes to the terrorist threat, we have to draw on the results of the customs checks when it comes to the non-declared transport, for example, of uh, big amounts of cash, which is often linked to uh, illegal activities in order to back up the uh, dossiers from the police or the, the, the border police. And then we can control the high risk of passengers on the basis of previous customs data that we have received. So thank you very much for your attention. And I now uh, give the floor to my colleague Miguel at CBO, who's going to talk about possible models of cooperation dealing with the integrated border management approach. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. In my second uh, part of the presentation, I will show you the models of cooperation between border guards and customs in the context of the integrated border management. Uh, I, first of all, in the, the Schengen Aki is a central pillar in the external border management. And it's based on the Schengen Agreement, which lays down rules on external border crossing and condition governing the temporary reintroduction of internal border check. Nowadays, sorry, nowadays the recent development at the external border of the European Union, and in particular to the Mediterranean area, pose significant challenges that need to be addressed with innovative and sustainable solution in order to increase the safety and security and take into account the fluid and smooth circulation on passenger and goods. For this reason, as established the last legislative development in policy adopted with reference to the area of border management are provided by the regulation of European border and coast guard as defined the integrated border manager concept. Within the aim of the integrated border manager regulation, the core components is focused on the interagency cooperation between different authorities involved, involved in the border, like also between border guards and custom administration. The uh, European EBM strategy is based on the 11 strategic components defined in the European border and coast guard regulation. The main strategic components are Border control based on the risk analysis that is a crucial part of the border management. It's necessary a consistent process for analyzing the information based on systematic collecting, uh, collecting and data and consist in three interlinked stages, risk assessment, risk management, and risk communication. Interagency cooperation between different border authorities called implement uh, current communication between the authorities, such as border guard and customs, at national, regional, and local level. Cooperation with third countries, state of, art of the state of art of technology. It's important to have a national plan concerning the use of technical system, such as plan of the IT system integration 
plan how to use the ABC gates and other technical system. Another opportunity is given also by the research and development of proje project in order to find out new technology solutions that can be, can be addressed to solve new, tech, new challenges and improve the, the process uh, of border crossing. Training is in general prepare the joint training uh, with the different authorities and uh, the most point uh, interesting uh, the customs are connected to the IBM concept to the interagency cooperation and we need to take into account that custom and border guards play a significant role in order to develop cooperation and increase the synergies at the best of, at, at the best in order to fight all the gross and border crimes activities cooperation model and coordination are based on three different pillars of the IBM strategy. Inter-service cooperation, the skill of cooperation and coordination between different agencies or units within one ministry. Inter-agency cooperation refers to the cooperation and collaboration between all agencies involved in the border management. And international cooperation, it refers a model of cooperation with other countries and international organizations. The inter-service cooperation model is based on procedures and exchange of information. In particular, these models include the vertical cooperation between all different agencies within the one ministry at the national, regional, and local level, and also is related to the horizontal cooperation between different units of the same levels. Concerning the inter-agency cooperation, these models involve the different authorities at the border and from our view, in particular, the board of guards and customs. To establish the cooperation structure of this model is necessary setting up a specific agreement, like as strategic national plan and the respective national action plan for the implementation. It's important to prepare specific written agreement based on memorandum of understanding as clear legal basis, legal basis at all level in order to enhance and improve the cooperation. This coordination should, be, should lead to have a more efficient producer and producers and workflow and increase the detection of illicit cross border activities. It's important to use a programmatic approach that takes into account the specific type of organization at the national level, the different type of border, air border, sea border, and land border within the respective infrastructure and establish the level of, of cooperation. Now, the content of this slide shows the database existing by the different authorities. On the left side, there are, there are uh, border guard IT system, and on, on the other side, there are the custom IT system. It's important to observe that the exchange of data from the two different IT systems could give an added value in the passenger profiling and to enhance the control at the border. The common use of this information is usable also to implement an appropriate process that includes a regular exchange of statistical data, operational information, and early warning data. This partnership, together with the creation and implementation of a shared vision between customers and border guards on the border manager, is central in fighting illegal activities, while facilitating legitimate trade and safeguarding the free movement of people and goods. Improving this uh, intelligence cooperation and information sharing is one of the key objectives of the EU strategy and action plan on customer risk management. Customer intelligence and information is valuable also to other law enforcement authorities and security agencies. Should be fully exploited in the cooperation. And the international cooperation is, has an important role uh, and is based on the uh, cooperation with the neighboring and other relevant counties, cooperation with international stakeholders and cooperation at the local and the operational level between uh, official borders. Thank you for your, your attention and thank you again to the ICAO for the invitation and for this opportunity. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Giovanni and Michele.
Uh, so we've heard in our first presentation um, about the uh, time critical high volume challenge of uh, dealing with travellers at the border and the importance of responding to all threats and all risks and uh, approaches of integrated border management to deal with uh, that challenge. Um, if we've got any questions uh, for our speakers, we'll be uh, taking the questions at the end. You can, of course, submit them, you know, already by uh, email or fr uh, directly from the floor. I'd like to introduce our um, second speaker. Giovanni is a uh, Italian police officer who's seconded for the time being with Interpol. Interpol are expanding their um, products for supporting um, border management and um, Giovanni, uh, sorry, Fabrizio is going to be talking about um, some of those uh, products. Um, so let me just hand over and we'll try and get back on track on time. Ladies and gentlemen, good, good day, good morning, everybody. Uh, before to start, uh, let me uh, um, thank uh, ICAO for giving uh, Interpol the honor to address uh, you today about uh, its uh, border solutions. Um, so here you can see the Interpol values, uh, those elements that ensure Interpol presence and visibility at border. You can see here that uh, the Interpol elements can be uh, split into two categories. We have the categories of the information and the categories of the technology. When we talk about information, we talk about uh, data that is provided to Interpol uh, by the, its member states, its 192 member states. And here it's very much important to underline that uh, uh, the information that uh, the, the member states share with, the Inter with Interpol remain property of the, of the, of the states. Interpol act just as a custodian of the national data. While when we move to the second element, that is the element of the technology, it's uh, something that uh, Interpol as an organization has developed. And uh, we want to talk today about two important components of this uh, category. Infrastructure, so the network, Interpol 24-7, and uh, the interoperable in solution that uh, allow uh, the member states to integrate access to Interpol databases within their national existing system. When we talk about inter interoperability, interoperability uh, it's, uh, uh, on a two, uh, um, it's twofold. First of all is interoperability, interoperability, internal interoperability. It means that in the last 15 years, Interpol passed from three databases uh, to the current 17. This contains about 80 million of records contributed by the member states and international organizations uh, partnering with us across the world. But uh, these databases were developed independently and not in unison. Namely, each database was designed as a standalone system. We are currently assessing the possibility to create uh, interoperability between uh, this system. These two have uh, at least uh, above, above, uh, among those systems that have uh, a similar operational interconnection, as they could serve uh, the same law enforcement profile uh, such as border agencies. The operational impact on creating uh, full interoperability among Interpol databases would be very great. Uh, since it would provide the end user with the possibility to get, uh, through a single query, several answers from different databases, creating a kind of a one-stop shop page. Although example of inter interoperability is already uh, in place at Interpol, the entire process is still ongoing. We have already a long-term uh, plan approved in this direction, but uh, it needs to be embedded into a more um, clear program. When we move on uh, external interoperability, um, uh, it's something that is already operational. Uh, it, is called, it is the so-called uh, interoperability integration between Interpol and the member states and other international organizations. Interpol, in the last 10 years, worked with the goal of reinforcing uh, countries' capabilities 
to process Interpol data through business-to-business -business solution using uh, web services technologies. Ad hoc services has been developed for both data management and data consultation. Through interoperable solution for data contribution, we are now able to timely and systematically synchronize national databases with Interpol databases, so maintaining a fully consistency between them. It also improved dramatically the data quality of the Interpol information. Through interoperable solution for data search, our member states can now integrate access to Interpol databases from their national existing border or police system. Here you can see our array of border-oriented uh, databases, composed of both first-line databases, which include uh, the Interpol stolen lost travel document, and uh, nominal database, which include the notice and, uh, uh, and the diffusion. And also we have a second, third line uh, oriented databases uh, included with the dial doc, Edison travel document, disks, but also that are not indicated here, um, biometric solution such as fingerprints, DNA and facial recognition. By screening passengers travel document, uh, um, collecting information from the machine readable zone or from the ship of the, of the, pass, of the, of the, of the passport, uh, we can collect uh, uh, those elements uh, like name, surname, that of birth, uh, the document identification number, uh, the country that has issuing the document. And all these elements can be used to query our databases. <clears throat> Nominal database. Let's go now a little bit more in detail about uh, each of these databases, starting with the nominal database. Member states can now automatically, using application, submit uh, international notices seeking for the arrest of a wanted criminal, location of missing persons, warning of dangerous persons, or seeking for additional information. This is, pro this is possible through a dedicated uh, web services solution called iLink that enable the instant record of information into the Interpol nominal databases and the almost immediate accessibility of that record for authorized law enforcement agencies around the world. Afterwards, accessing this information at border, law enforcement agents can be warned anytime uh, if uh, the name, the surname, the date of birth of the person that is under um, uh, check uh, match those that are in the Interpol databases. Let's move on SLTD databases now. Database now. Uh, I heard uh, several times uh, talking about SLTD database in the last two days, and uh, it's, uh, this, this slide is just to remind you that uh, we are collecting about 75 million of data related to stolen, lost, revoked, and stolen blank um, travel document. Uh, because it's very much important that this database is timely synchronized with the national database, we have developed interoperable solution for data contribution. It is called, I, um, it is called sorry, Wisdom, and we recommend the member states to implement this system in order to have systematically, uh, synchron uh, systematically synchronization between a national and Interpol databases. This is very much important when we talk about travel document because a stolen or lost travel document in most of the cases is used immediately after the lost or the theft. And if there is no this uh, timely synchronization, there is the risk that the document is used to cross the world, to cross borders for days before it is uh, worn in the international databases like SLTD. Uh, how we query database? Uh, we query database by using mostly the uh, information from the machine readable zone of, the, of a travel document. And uh, we have developed, a, again, web services solution, business to business solution to ensure, the to give the possibility to the member states, to the law enforcement agencies, to query simultaneously the national databases, regional databases for those countries that access regional databases, such as in Europe, uh, uh, the Schengen database, and the Interpol one. What is the solution that Interpol has developed is uh, FIND. 
This is a perfect example of the interoperability between an existing national infrastructure and the integration of the re relevant Interpol web services. It enables identity and travel document checks against the national, regional, and Interpol databases simultaneously through a unique national-based graphical user interface, interface as a one-stop uh, shop page. Uh, for uh, some example is uh, depicted in this, uh, in this slide uh, with, uh, with, uh, in, uh, with a fine solution that has been developed in Mexico, in France, and in Switzerland. Uh, furthermore, very much important, uh, this fine solution is fully compati co compatible with the uh, interactive API, uh, meaning to say that uh, me member states that implement uh, API on national side should also consider the possibility to implement FIND in order to have the bulk of data coming from the airlines automatically checked against the Interpol databases. Uh, however, despite all these uh, solutions, we are still experiencing a big gap between the number of uh, passengers worldwide and, uh, and the number of checks against Interpol databases. Uh, here you can see that there is a gap of about 1.7 billion checks against Interpol databases compared to the number of uh, travelers that uh, um, air travelers, we are talking about air travelers, uh, circulating uh, in the year 2016. Uh, same consideration uh, if we consider the nominal database, because we have about uh, 1 billion searches and uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, the gap is very, is very much impo important. Uh, what is the reason between be, 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 um, the reason behind this gap. Aside the common factors such as the technical complexity, complexity and or the implementation cost, uh, that, that, that those are issues that uh, along with our international partners uh, we are trying to mitigate through the adop adoption of a DOCT program. There are other more operational. First of all, there is a big difficulty for the member states to implement national standard operating procedure. This is because sometimes at the national side, there is no good communication between the different stakeholders. And uh, the lack of, standard, of clear standard of national standard operating procedure means that the member states don't know how to use the Interpol databases. And the second, uh, it is more related to uh, SLTD. It's a problem with uh, so-called false positive. Um, we know that there are a lot of uh, documents that is reported as stolen or lost by the citizen. And uh, then is found in the pocket, in uh, the luggage, and uh, the citizen fail to inform the member states, its authority that has uh, refound it. And uh, this, uh, it's a big problem because they start using this document and the document is checked against uh, international borders, uh, trigger a, a, a need against the Interpol SLTD database, and each case must be uh, processed and it takes a lot of time. Because we are talking about a very big number of, of, of these, uh, the percentage is really much more than 50%. It has a big operational impact for the border uh, authorities because they have to process each case and it takes a lot of time that uh, at the end is wasting time because has no uh, interest for the police. Uh, about uh, the interoperability between Interpol and the API, PNR and the Evisa, uh, this is something that uh, we, are, we will return in the, after, in the afternoon because I will be also present during the uh, workshop that uh, is organized in the, after, in, the, in the afternoon. Just to say that it's very much important for us that, uh, um, that the when a country is decided to implement a, a national um, API system, it's important to reinforce the national cooperation among all the, the actors that uh, play whatsoever role in the API implementation or management. We want also to raise awareness about the need of using recommended standards that will give us the possibility to refine our system in a way fully compatible with the API. I'm talking about the use of UN EDIFACT PAX list at uh, national level to receive data from airlines. The third point that is very much important is the use of a single window in order to have uh, just uh, one actor that receives the data and uh, uh, it's uh, the actor that then will be in touch with Interpol to, uh, to check the, uh, this bulk of data against Interpol databases. Next, uh, what, is in the, what we have in the pipeline? Uh, the first thing that we have has been already introduced yesterday by the colleague from Frontex. Uh, we are, Interpol and Frontex, merging respective values 
to deliver better services. Uh, yesterday it was introduced this project uh, that is uh, called Fields. Uh, the second uh, very important uh, one, one yes. uh, the second very important uh, uh, element that is in the pipeline is the, int uh, is, uh, the um, use of biometric at border. So we are implementing a new system that gives the possibility to the member states to access the database of fingerprints, uh, facial and, and DNA. Uh, a recommendation is to implement, implement the find solution uh, at a national level, is uh, to integrate find within the, Interpol, the, um, the national uh, border management system, uh, is to screen systematically and automatically all passengers against Interpol databases, and to think about uh, uh, checking Interpol databases when you have implemented the API PNR data or eVisa. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, if there is something we can discuss, I think, after my presentation. And uh, thank you again for your attention. Um, thanks, Fabrizio, for updating us on Interpol's important and increasingly important role uh, contribution in border control management. So next we're going to hear from Dr. Belder about uh, Spain's Smart Borders uh, project. Um, Dr. Dr. Belder is currently the direct Deputy Director General of Communication and Information Systems for Security in the Spanish Ministry of the Interior. Uh, he's a former doctor at the Polytechnic University of uh, Valencia with a background in uh, civil engineering um, and a published author of uh, a number of articles. So we look forward to his presentation. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for your kind introduction, uh, Mr. Greenwood. I would like uh, also uh, to thank the organization for inviting me on behalf of the Spanish Ministry of Interior to this con Congress. It's a pleasure for me to have the opportunity to share in our experience and knowledge in the area of border security in this important forum. Security is one of the top priorities for citizens of any countries. The main risk and threats for, to security facing the world today, such as a terrorism, closer border organized crime, tra draft trafficking, cybercrime, and trafficking in human beings, are rapidly adapting to the scientific and technological development. Therefore, a global security approach is required, capable of adapting both to the needs of citizens and to the challenge of the dynamic and global 21st century. In this sense, as we will see, the Deputy Director General of Communication and Information System for Security of the Spanish Ministry of Interior plays a fundamental role in reaching these objectives, leading the Security Technology Center. This center, placed in the location of El Pardo, Madrid, inaugurated in April 2016, also houses the National Center for Critical Infrastructure Protection as an end user of the center, systems and technology, along with other diverse staff of the Ministry of Interior. In total, the center houses around 200 workers. Our position within the Spanish Ministry of Interior gives us a global vision, which allow us from the beginning to integrate plans, programs, advising, control coordination, standardization and harmonization, promotions, research, development and innovations, assessment and international relationships in the technological security fields. In particular, the Deputy Director General of Communication and Information System for Security Mission is the comprehensive management of communication and information system for the Spanish security forces in order to help them to exercise its rule in safeguarding the rights, freedoms and security of citizens more efficiently and effectively in the following areas. Communication systems, Schengen and smart borders, security databases, lawful interception and data retention, operation coordination systems, and other projects for the Ministry of Interior. Today, we are working in more than 50 projects in order to improve the sustainable future of technologies for security. In the following slide, I will show a small sample of some of the projects that we manage. 
the state emergency digital radio communication systems, the low fall interception and data rotation systems, the Spanish DNA profile databases, the Spanish automatic fingerprints identification systems, the Spanish critical infrastructure information systems, the Spanish counterterrorism coordination systems. And then there are also systems specifically re uh, related to the management of travelers' information and border crossing, such as the second generation of Schengen information systems, the advanced passenger information systems, the Spanish passengers' name record systems, the automatic vehicle identification and location systems, and the smarter border projects, which I will explain in detail now. Our Smarter Border Project aims at managing the Spanish border through a comprehensive vision in which, on the one hand, we have border crossing points, BCPs, at airports, seaports, and land borders. At these control points, we can have both automatic control systems, manual control systems, and different physical equipment, passport readers, fingerprint readers, ID card readers. On the other hand, we have a set of current or future information system and external databases, such as Schengen information systems, visa information systems, advanced passenger information systems, entry exit systems. All resulting data are collected and the different police border control centers where the information is visualized and analyzed, giving support to decision making. The first systems I will speak about is the ABC systems, which aim to ease the crossing of the other border of the Schengen area for European citizens over 18 years old who carry an electronic passport or an Spanish electronic ID without prior enrollment. The three key components of the ABC systems are the identification module, in which with the traveler performs in an attended way the process of document validation and identifications through facial and fingerprint biometry, the access module that automatically allow the border crossing if the previous process was successful, systems control post from where to monitor the system and an, an attend to this case in which the border crossing and was not possible in an automatic way. We have implemented in Spain three different types of solutions. Mantra configurations, where the identification module is located inside a mantra. Two-step configuration in which the identification is made first and then the traveler goes to an exit door holding the, finger, the fingerprint as a token. And mixed configuration, where the identification module is integrated in the access module. And so far, two types of access module have been installed. The main components, which are cameras, electronic mirror, touch screen, smart card readers, and passport verifiers. And this slide summarizes the automatic verification step using an electronic passport. In the first place, the physical validation and verification of the document is carried out. This consists of reading the matching readable zone and the visual inspection zone of the passport in visible light, ultraviolet and infrared. And then the security elements are compared through a passport security pattern databases. Second, the chip verification is performed once the algorithms for security access and authentication of the passport chip has been executed, the system must verify the data real from the chip and verify its authenticity by executing all part of passive authentication following the ICAO 9303 standards, as well as some additional controls available in the second generation passport. Third, Facial biometric verification is performed. The system extracts the electronic patterns image storage in the document chip and compare it with the photograph taken in leave with the, to the traveler and with the one captured from the biographical page of the document. Finally, the biometric fingerprint verification is carried out. The systems capture the traveler's fingerprints and compare it with the pattern stored in the document. Then, the system's business logic decide if the traveler is allowed to cross the border depending on the result of the previous verifications. The following checks 
are also carried out in police databases. Verification of travelers' personal data against police databases in search of heat, verification of the document number in the stolen and lost document databases. With the Spanish electronic ID, the process is similar. The main difference is that for finger verification, a match on card algorithm is used. The ABC uh, in Spain began in 2010 with a pilot project in the airport of Madrid and Barcelona with a total of 24 identification models installed. In 2014, the Malaga airport is incorporated, adding seven new identification models. And in June, of 2015, the airport of Madrid and Barcelona are extended, and one of the Girona, Alicante, Palma de Mallorca, Tenerife, the port of Algeciras, and the Polish control of La Línea de la Concepción were added, with a total of 127 identification modules at national level. Now, we are working in the installation of more than 100 new identification modules, both in airport, seaports, and land border. For illustrative purpose, the following slides, which I will show very quickly, sample some images of the current ABC system develop, de deployment. Barcelona and Madrid Airport, La Línea de la Concepción Police Control, Entry Terminal, Palma de Mallorca, Málaga and Alicante Airport. As we can see in this slide, since the pilot system launched, the ABC system has been used by more than 8.8 .8 million travelers, in which 75% were by air, 24% via land controls, and 1% via seaports. Regarding the manual control, this Spanish uh, smother border project includes two different configurations. A standard alone police uh, control post, in which there are different devices available for bi biometric control fingerprint reader, document verifier, and a smart reader, and police control past associated to the ABC systems uh, that have the same elements together with the ABC management and control requirement. In this sense, and as a part of the Global Smarter project, we have developed and implemented a set of border control centers that allow to provide the national border police with a technological infrastructure to display, monitor, and manage the border control activity at the airport, seaport, and land borders. The slide shows the idea graphically. Data is received, is received from the crossing points, other control center, and other sources of information, and at the border control center where it's visualized and analyzed, giving support to decision making. So far, three border control centers have been deployed. The National Control Center for Border Coordination, a backup center enabled to take on the function of the main center if necessary, and a regional border control center for the Gibraltar Strait area. All these centers are connected through a telecommunication network, and each architecture allows future interconnection with the regional center that could be implemented. In addition to all of above, we are currently working on the project to implement a smarter border in the Spanish autonomous cities of Ceuta and Melilla. The main objective of the project are the control of vehicle and pedestrian, the resources of limitation, and the use of information through the implementation of technology system that at the exit and entry area at the border with Morocco, such as pre-enrollment and facial recognition, ABC systems, automatic license plate recognition, and intelligent monitoring of traffic area. To conclude, this slide show, in short, the holistic visions that we intend to promote in Spain for the initiative related to the Smarter Border projects, where there, are, there is a set of means and systems, both manual and automatic, whose information can be merged and analyzed, always in a respectful way with the individual rights and the data privacy and protection, to allow intelligent border management from Polish control centers. And this is my presentation. I hope it has been of interest and achieved the objective of showing you our smart board project in Spain. Thank you very much. And I welcome uh, any question that you may have. Thank you, Thank you very much. 12 minutes. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Dr. Bilder. That's a, a 
presentation a, a reminder for all of us of the importance of uh, integration of the full range of uh, security checks on documents and travellers to have a proper risk assessment when automated border controls are being implemented. So um, I think Dr Belders described that uh, perfectly in his uh, presentation. So for our final presentation of uh, the session this morning, uh, we're going to hear from Tom on EU border harmonisation. So Tom's a research officer in the Research and Innovation Unit of Frontex. He's currently involved in the harmonisation of EU border control capacities project, um, which has been established to look at best practices and recommendations in the area of border control uh, for the EU.